In 1998, Rareware released a groundbreaking game. A game with ambition, memorable characters, and a game that went on to become the greatest 3D platformer of all time. That game is Banjo-Kazooie, but still, the fans wanted more. So in 1999, Rareware released Donkey Kong 64 for the Nintendo 64, bundled with the expansion pack which you would need to play the game. It was a late 1999 release, arriving right on time for the holidays. The matching shirt. Wait until you see them. Harry Potter. Oh no! Donkey Kong 64! Yes! Where's the expansion it's oh, inside of it. It's inside with it. Included! Yes! Yay! Yes! We got the rumble back! Yes! Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah! yeah. I first got Donkey Kong 64 back in 2002 and it was the Nintendo 64 game I played the most as a kid. My dad loved this game just as much as I do. When my parents ended up selling it years later I was devastated and was in a desperate need for a new copy. I would finally get another copy of DK64 back in Christmas of 2009, a whole 10 Christmases after the game launched. I had asked my dad for a Nintendo 64 that Christmas so that I could relive all my Nintendo 64 childhood memories. So that Christmas, my dad got me a green Nintendo 64 and four games, and Donkey Kong 64 was one of them. The Jungle Green 64 was the perfect console to play Donkey Kong 64 on. Donkey Kong 64 was actually bundled with green 64s back in the day. When you launch the game, the first thing you get is the Donkey Kong rap. This song is so notorious for being one of the corniest songs in video games. Only musical scrubs could come up with a song as shitty as this one. But that being said, I really enjoyed the intro as a kid. My little sisters who were born after this game came out used to watch me play it a decade ago. I showed this intro to them recently and they knew the song word for word. I perverted their minds with this bullshit. As soon as you skip the DK rap, you're presented with a start screen. Back when I was a toddler, this was one of my favorite start screens, only taught by Paper Mario 64. I found it fascinating how it was supposed to look like Donkey Kong 64 was a TV channel. Donkey Kong. After the star screen, you're able to choose from five different modes. Adventure, which is where the single player campaign is, Sound, where you can select your sound preferences. Kong Battle, which is multiplayer mode and the best part of the game for me to be honest. Mystery and the options. This is where you'll be having all the fun. First and foremost, let's talk about the single player campaign since it's the main game. The plot of the game is that King K. Rool kidnaps Donkey Kong's friends and Donkey Kong has to rescue them. After rescuing your friends, you have to rescue a huge crocodile. In order to rescue him, you must collect the 8 keys that you obtain by beating the bosses of all 8 worlds. You gotta unlock all the monkeys except for Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong is the first member of the DK crew. Back when I was a toddler, Donkey Kong was my favorite character in video games. He collects the yellow bananas. He uses a coconut gun. It's just a log that shoots coconuts. Diddy Kong is the second monkey you get to play as. Diddy Kong is a chimp and he collects red bananas. He has the coolest ability in the game. He's able to fly around in a jetpack and shoot peanuts out of his pistols. Did I mention that Diddy Kong has two guns? Good for running a gun. Lankin Kong is the third monkey you unlock. He's my personal favorite. He's an orangutan with long arms who collects blue bananas. His gun is a sniper that shoots grapefruits. 
Unfortunately, just because it's a sniper doesn't mean that it's any different from the guns that the other monkeys use. In fact, they're all exactly the same. Later in the game, you do unlock the sniper feature for all weapons by any monkey, which allows you to zoom in. I think it would have been much better if the monkey's guns did different shit besides just shoot fruits. Tiny Kong is the fourth monkey you unlock. She collects purple bananas. It's so easy to mistake purple and blue bananas for each other. So what the heck, why not pick a different color? She uses a crossbow that shoots feathers. The guns were a great addition as you use them to shoot down enemies and activate buttons. It would have been totally boring playing this game without them. To be honest, I avoid using Tiny Kong as much as possible. And the reason is because I don't like playing as chicks in video games when you can also play as a guy. It's nothing against women, it's just that I'm a dude and I also want to play as a dude. This is the only reason I prefer Donkey Kong Country 1 over 2 and 3 even though the latter games are slightly better than DK Country 1. Speaking of DK Country 2 and 3, I know what you're thinking. Why isn't Dixie Kong the fourth playable monkey instead of Tiny Kong? Well it makes more sense that Tiny Kong is the playable monkey because her special ability is to shrink in size so that she could fit in small holes. This wouldn't have made any sense if Dixie Kong was the playable monkey. Chunking Kong is the fifth and last monkey you get. Chunking Kong collects green bananas and he's easily a likable character, making him a fan favorite in the Donkey Kong 64 fan club. He's slower than the other monkeys and doesn't jump as high. Since I was only a toddler when I first got the game, this was the first time in video games where I was able to tell the difference between how the playable characters differentiate from each other. And that's thanks to Chunking Kong being the odd monkey out. What I will always remember the most about playing as Chunking Kong was his green vest and his backwards hat. As an adult, I wonder why he's only wearing half a vest. He only has it on his back. Why doesn't the clothes that he's wearing that you can see from second person view match what you can see in third person view? To switch between monkeys, you have to jump inside barrels. When I was a kid, I loved jumping into these barrels. Not only is your health replenished, but it also gave me a very chill atmosphere. No enemies can hurt me when I'm in the barrel. As an adult, I despise the barrel system. This game is a collect-a-thon. You have to collect not only small bananas, but also big bananas and banana medals, which are only pick up a bowl by the corresponding monkey. This means that if you're playing as Donkey Kong, you can only accept yellow bananas. So if you come across red bananas, you have to find a barrel and switch to Diddy Kong and then go back to the red bananas. You also need to do this whenever you come across buttons as they can only be pressed by a certain monkey. Polls show that this game takes on average 40 hours to complete and it's only 8 worlds. If you were able to rotate between monkeys at any point of the game by simply pressing, I don't know, the L button which is completely ignored, this game would take a fraction of the time to complete. Maybe someday someone will release a hacked version of this game where you can do that. You begin the game at Donkey Kong's house. This area was where I played around when I used to play this game as a toddler. I love going into the house and pressing up C to look around the room. I remember as a toddler hanging out in the house and utilizing the up C button to view the door hole exposing the exterior of the house. I would say, look, it's a tree. Then I would run outside and I would jump on the trees and climb them and swing on ropes. This was one of my favorite parts of the game. After you get out of that area, you're in the hub world. It's the island that Donkey Kong lives in. This has got to be one of the best hub worlds in video game history. You might not think much of it, but as an adult, I look at this hub world as a dazzling, purely angelic gift sent down from heaven by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It brings me back to the summer of 2003. I was almost 5 years old at the time. This was such a magical time for me. The early 2000s, that was the best time to be alive. Everyone used to watch media on VHS tapes. My cousin Gianputo had recently moved here from Venezuela. He would only stay here for a couple of years. Then he went back to Venezuela and he couldn't wipe his ass anymore because there was no toilet paper. But while he was here, we used to play Donkey Kong 64 together. We used to run around in the hub world doing absolutely nothing at all. 
My favorite memory of these times was when my cousin Gianputo kept switching monkeys to see how they would swim. He would judge the way that they would swim and would comment his opinion on it. I remember him saying that Len King Kong and Chun King Kong both swim in an idiotic manner. He said that Len King Kong and Chun King Kong are estupido. Another time my cousin came to my house who we were playing in my parents room running around the hub world. When I got the controller, Gianputo vanished. I left the room and spent about 20 minutes looking for him. Once I gave up and went back into my room to play DK64, I found him sitting behind the other side of the bed, playing with my toys. I should have kicked him in the face. I used to spend so much time when I was 4 years old playing as Donkey Kong swimming in circles in the waterfall and collecting the oranges. I would always have a family member around me when swimming around in the waterfall cause the rotation of which TV the 64 was hooked up to was mostly the living room and from time to time in my parents room. If I was in the living room, I remember swimming in the water or just running around killing the moles while I had my older siblings around me either talking on the house phone or listening to CDs. I would be playing this game and my older brother would be close to me on the computer playing his shitty PC games. Good god these games look like monstrosities. He would walk by every now and then to look over my shoulder and comment on the game. He wasn't really too interested in Donkey Kong 64. Also my grandma would be playing on that computer but she was only into solitaire which she taught me how to play. My grandma would look at me playing playing Donkey Kong 64. She would be looking at me and smiling cause she saw I was having fun. But when she would look at the TV screen, she would turn away almost immediately. She wasn't interested either. She only liked card games and bingo. The first world you go into is Jungle Japes. It's the jungle level. This is one of my favorite levels. It's got pretty good music and at the beginning of the level you start off at a small section of the world where there are trees and ropes, which I thought was a good introduction to the world. As a kid, I like climbing up the trees and swinging on the vines. I really don't enjoy the time I spend in the caves though. That part's boring. As a kid, I really enjoyed swimming across the lake and climbing the vine. That's when you first get to go inside a funky store where you can buy weapons and upgrades. Close to Funky Store is Snide's headquarters. He gives you a golden banana for every blueprint you give him, which you get by killing cast splats. So these are the easiest golden bananas to get in the whole game. There's also a Cranky's lab. Cranky teaches the Kong's abilities in exchange for banana medals. I have such fond memories of watching my dad play the jetpack minigame in Cranky's lab. This was a tribute to one of Rareware's earlier titles named Jetpack that was released back in 1983. The second world is Angry Aztec. It's the desert level of the game. It's also the first time you go in Candy's music shop where you can purchase instruments. Back when I was 12 years old, I was playing through this world and I was having a good time until I got to the race against the beetle where you have to use Tiny Kong to both beat the beetle in a race and also collect 50 coins. This part made me want to rip the hairs out of my head. I vividly remember spending two whole hours trying to beat this guy in a race while also managing to grab 50 coins. I was so frustrated and ready to rage quit until by luck I finally beat this guy in a photo finish. The third world is Frantic Factory. This world is easily the most dull world in the game and I never really enjoyed it too often. This is where it begins to get painfully obvious how much of a poorly made decision it was for Rareware to force gamers to switch into different monkeys to collect bananas. It's so irritating walking into a room in this factory and there's collectibles scattered all over the room but they're all different colors so you have to constantly jump in and out of a barrel which half the time is nowhere near the room you're in to keep switching between monkeys to collect all the bananas. This world also includes a revised version of the original Donkey Kong arcade game which is hard as fuck. Don't plan on trying to beat this shit unless you have a lot of time to spare. Beating it once rewards you with a golden banana. Beating it twice rewards you with a Nintendo coin which you'll need to beat the game.
The fourth world is Gloomy Gallon. Although this is the water level of this game, I don't find it as annoying as water levels in other games because there's plenty of ground for you to run on. The coolest part about this level is the pirate ship. The fifth world is Fungi Forest. This level is a forest made up of fungi. It's a nice level with good music. The sixth world is Crystal Caves. In this level, you're inside of a cold cave. So cold that there's ice in it. When the music first starts playing, it's so elegant and mystical until all hell breaks loose when the floor starts shaking. What a way to kill the mood. The seventh world is Creepy Castle. It's one of the coolest levels in the game. As a kid, I remember watching my dad play through this level when I was four. He was using Chunking Kong to collect the green bananas and he had made the comment that Mad Monster Mansion from Banjo-Kazooie was a copy of this level. Little did we know that Rareware actually made both games and Banjo-Kazooie was released first. I remember this world the most for the fact that it's constantly raining. The eighth and last world is Hideout Helm. This is my favorite level in the game because it's not a collectathon like you thought it was. You had to get through this level by alternating between monkeys to solve the puzzles, but it doesn't get as bad as games like Zelda where a large portion of the game is a puzzle, because it's easy to figure out what to do in this level. Also, the music is cool too and definitely fitting. Now enough about the single player campaign, let's talk about some of the other features of the game. Mystery is where you get to play what you unlock. You unlock things by taking pictures of fairies in the campaign. I remember going on this back when I was 4 years old to play Rambai Arena. I was a rhinoceros running around hitting moles. If you take a picture of 15 fairies in this game, you're able to play as a Kremlin in multiplayer mode. Which brings us to Kong Battle, which is the multiplayer mode of this game. In my opinion, the multiplayer mode is easily the highlight of the whole game. You can play in Battle Arena, which is a much quicker way to play. You and up to three friends spawn on a plate and you have to survive. Obviously, the ideal way to play would be to go after your buddies and kill them to ensure you're the last monkey standing. It's very basic, but a ton of fun. I played it with my cousin Gianputo back in the summer of 03 when I spent so much time playing this game. Oh my god! Are you gonna frozen in there? The wombos, kid! Not butt pounded you, kid. Oh, I'm too fast! Oh no. I'm the fastest god. monkey around, kids. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Why am I oh, still frozen? Oh, God, God, you can squash me. Chill! Oh. I think you gotta press a button to get out of that one. God damn it. Aha! Wow! Oh. <laughs> that was close. close, but no cigar. How did a big this is monkey fucking kill another big monkey? Some goofy one. nigga shit right here. <laughs> okay. Wow! Oh, I no got way! No, I have a gun! I have a sniper. I still have four. I don't lives. think I killed anybody. Damn it, bro. <laughs> I know, I got killed. What? Oh, man, what did he call? You need a get on. <laughs> I still have four lives. You need a get on. I'm tired of this kid winning. He went at Mario Party. He went at Smash Bros. I went at Mario Party for both. He got annoying at Smash Bros. He got annoying in this <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> the other way to play is Monkey Smash, which drags on for much longer since you play in open worlds like in the single player mode. Come over here, you get to play as Cranky. Oh. I, like, I have my boys come over here and we played this. How the fuck am I supposed to select my character? Are you done? Where you guys at, bro? You guys better get away from me. I don't oh, see bro, you, bro. Okay. <laughs> oh, get back here. 
What are you? What are you? How do I? Sorry. Oh! <laughs> shit. Nice guys finished last. Oh, how do I shoot? I, oh you, my I god, I'll take you. you. Bro, I'm gonna shoot you with coconuts, kid. Chill. Oh, I am. Oh, god damn. I'm, ah, I graduated oh, the best sniper in my class. Oh, chill. The point of this mode is that you have to find your friends and kill them. I have so many memories playing Monkey Smash with my friends. When I was 16 years old, me and my delinquent ass friends were playing this game in Arena 2, which is a color-coded level in Monkey Smash. The base that everyone spawns in is a certain color, so we were pretending that we were gangbangers protecting our territory. We would say lame-ass shit like, stay in your lane. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Wanna go? Oh, he poisoned me or something. Oh, you wanna go? Right I, I, I think that was you? Yeah, I killed you. Hi. Beautiful at the same time? Yeah. Oh, God. Get back, I'm not ready. Oh, Sigh. Oh. What's up? Just ran into somebody. Oh, no scoping. Oh, man, I somebody. went to like. Oh, he's out of there! That's not even enough to be an active shot. That's it. He's out of there, but Lanky comes to clean up. No! Oh! <laughs> Got you got <laughs> right when I got the watermelon. During this time in my life that I would play DK64's multiplayer often with my friends, one thing I loved doing was watching them fight while I sniped them from a distance. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh, you're done. I mean, I, I'm just attacking. I don't even know. What, what the, the hell? hell is that? <laughs> I hate you for everything. Don't get away. I played the hell out of the multiplayer mode as a teenager with my friends, but unfortunately, I didn't get many opportunities to try it out as a toddler back in the early 2000s because when me and my family were going to play a four-player game, it was mainly Mario Kart 64, Banjo-Tooie. We rarely played Donkey Kong 64's multiplayer, but the multiplayer in this game is definitely the best part. So at the end of the day, is Donkey Kong 64 a good game or a bad one? It's a good game that failed to live up to the expectations. This was the biggest game that Rareware worked on for the Nintendo 64 and was supposed to be the best game on the console. But having to constantly switch between monkeys in the single player campaign to collect bananas almost completely overshadows all the great aspects of the game and almost completely ruins it to be quite honest. But I'd be lying if I told you I didn't have a huge sense of achievement once I completed it again. So why do I love this game so much? Well, this was my favorite game in my early childhood. My family loved it just like me. We related to each other through this game. Because of this game, Donkey Kong was my favorite character in video games. This was the reason I always chose him in Mario Kart 64. Back when I was 4 years old, my cousins had given me their old books. My mom used to read me the ones that were in Spanish, but the ones that were in English, she would just point at the illustrations and describe them. I loved Donkey Kong so much that when I was four, I even drew him in one of the books that I still have to this day. Donkey Kong was so cool to me. He was the cool character of the Nintendo 64 games I had in my childhood. Donkey Kong was so cool to me. He was the cool character of the Nintendo 64 games I had in my childhood. Donkey Kong 64 may not be your cup of tea. You might think it's a lame game, but it's cool to me.